Well, this video is going to be really chopped up because um, I'm, I'm not going to try and figure out how to edit this shit. So um, I had to go look and see what the movie was. They don't keep track of like what you watched, I guess. But um, it says because I watched this one movie, this other one. But there was two. I swear there was some other one. So um, one thing I've really noticed too with the brain injury for mine I mean, everybody's is different, but for mine, it is so, um, it's like, there's no connect. This is like when it first happened, how I felt so much like I was living in a dream and, um, you know, like I couldn't tell the difference between what was real and what wasn't real. Like if I was asleep dreaming or if I was awake and it was real, that's how, cause every time I was awake, it felt like I was in a dream. It didn't feel like it was real. And, um, that is kind of like what it's like. Everything is disconnected, especially like lately since I've been doing all this talking and stuff and then writing because, you know, I do all the writing too or talking to people. I can't differentiate from what I've said from one person to the other. I can't even remember stuff I've said. I can't. When I looked and saw how many videos I had, I was like, what the fuck am I talking about? It's crazy. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I, so I probably repeat a lot of the same stuff. Um, I, you know, I don't know, but I just gotta say what I, how I see things. Um, but so this one movie that it did show that I watched was Broken Ghosts or something like that it was on, um, Prime. Yesterday I switched off a lifetime on the Prime. I don't have a lot. Um, oh, I remember too. Oh, now I remember. So one of them was an old, old Lifetime movie and I saw it on YouTube. Yeah, I'm positive it was off YouTube. But Death of it. No, it was on Lifetime. Death of a Cheerleader. And it was an old movie. It was true. And, um, and I don't remember if I talked about the other true movie that I saw the other day with the, um, about the, the baby with, um, one didn't have a brain and one needed a heart and the organ transplant and stuff and how much it bothered me with the, um, that they didn't give the lady or baby's body back. I was like, what the hell? Um, I don't know. There's just so much that's going to come out about this harvesting. It just, it makes me sick to my stomach. I can't stand to think about it. Um, it's just really horrible. It's just, it's just so sickening. This stuff. The, um, but so that bothered me. But and and this one was another one with the troubled teens, and this was the older. And um, one of them was a really snotty girl. <clears throat> she was just snotty as hell. She was so rude to kids at school. Just put them down. She you know made her feel better if she could get a whole crowd to laugh at this one person and just beat them down. And you know when you're in school you feel so insecure already and you feel so beat down and um you know you're just figuring out like who you are and trying to you know break away from your parents and stuff so it's very traumatic times for a lot of kids and the one girl was um she was like uh came from a close-knit family where you know the kids had all grown up she was the youngest and they had grown up and they were all res um successful, responsible, and the parents were super religious, and she felt a lot of pressure. She was trying so hard to be perfect. She wanted to just be perfect, and this girl was just mean, and she wanted to be friends with that girl, and then that girl was, um, you know, making fun of her, and it just set that girl into a thing, and she ended up killing her, stabbing her in a, you know, this frenzy. And the, the whole thing was just, you know, in this town too, that they, they put it all, um, it was like the news for everybody's further humiliation of this girl. And, um, you know, all this stuff is, it's real. We, we just, we have to learn how to treat each other better and to understand people are going through things. We shouldn't add more problems. You know, and I, I talk about the, um, you know, your karmic imprint 
and you know people think it's just like oh you know if i do this and this will happen right back but it's not it's not just like that what will happen back could happen way further i mean you are creating a karmic wave you are creating something and that's why you got to have the intent of being positive and creating a good wave otherwise everything that happens from your negative wave will come back on you you will carry the burdens of all that stuff like if um just me talking you know putting myself out there if this you know it caused some tragedy in someone's life depending on our intents and stuff like that you know in contracts it's a way beyond you know what i have you know in my three-dimensional life it's like uh out in the other realms kind of thing if that were to happen then that would be you know a, a karmic debt that i would have how i affected others so we have to always be thinking about trying to be positive and um and i hope still just really having a fit hopefully that's the message i'm really getting across all the time Gosh, lady. Oh, that was like, I don't know, she was maybe out 10 minutes. Um, but anyways, that's, you know, hopefully that people see that, you know, if somebody felt bad or wanted to harm themselves or harm somebody else, you know, then you can email me. I'll talk to you. You know, if I'm willing to put myself out there, I'm willing to be a shoulder for somebody who's going through a hard time. So, you know, and these are hard times. This is a, this is a huge transition for people. It's going to be a huge, a lot of stuff to understand, um, when it's all said and done, you know? And, um, oh, so the other movie, See, I was about to get stuck again. I go off on these things. I was about to go, what the fuck was that? I have to stop again. Because <laughs> I don't like to just sit there and like think and think and think. Even though it could only be like 60 seconds. Well, I had to look it up. It still, it starts to making me feel pressured. Like, oh. And, and then it panics me more and I can't remember even more. Oh, sweetie. You're such a sweet baby. Um, so the other one was called Broken Ghost. And, um... It was, it was another one where it was like, what is this guy's message? Like, I know he was trying to put some like deep messages in this, but it was um, another one where I felt like, you know, okay, is this what he's trying to say? Is this what he's trying to say? But so in this one, I hopefully, I'm not going to do like a spoiler. I don't think it's like some big movie that anybody's going to, oh, it wasn't people. Well, there was a girl I recognized. I think she was a child actress. Um, but now she's older. Um, but the other people, I don't think I recognized any of them, but it says so just this family and they've had to move to this new city because their daughter, uh, she was having sex at a party with somebody and, um, people went in and filmed it and then they posted it. And so there was, I don't know, lots of humiliation and people attacking her. She wants a toy box. Um, and so, you know, that's a whole thing. And, you know, they've already made that where that's a felony. If you do that, that's um, kind of distributing child porn. It's like a really big thing. Like even kids now who send naked pictures of each other, they can get in a lot of trouble for that because of these laws i mean who knows if they'd get caught but they if they did they'd be in a lot of trouble because <clears throat> it has happened people are getting in trouble for it distribution of underage porn or something they need to do that on a certain person fuck that person god i can't wait to see them go to jail fucking weirdo um but so that <clears throat> they move into this house and um <laughs> And see, when it started, I, like, maybe I missed some parts, but when it started, I thought, oh, this is, like, in cold blood. And um, in cold blood, that one of those guys lived up at the back of my uncle's farm. I think I've talked about this before. Because when we were little kids, we'd go back there, like, 
oh, this is in cold blood was a murder of a family in Kansas. And, um, these two guys just broke in and went crazy and they ended up getting hung. And there's new, uh, Truman Capote, <laughs> Truman Capote, I think is wrote about it. And, um, and then there's a movie about him writing about it because it was so like, he was going and visiting the killer and stuff. And I think they became kind of friends. Um, he did with one of them. I think, oh, I can't remember. I think he was friends with the one that, um, lived at the back of my uncle's farm because my uncle had all his acreage. And then way back um, in the fields was this little house. I don't know, but this little house had this man and his dad living in it. And um, Sally did knock my table over. And um, I love you too. And so anyways, in this one, it started out mm -hmm. like I thought, oh, this is the same, they're just doing that story. But then the story went to, mm -hmm. That the, these people moved into this murder house, only somehow the story got switched to the this dad who was the artist who was caring for his wife who had MS and their little girl, you know, went crazy and killed him. But in the beginning of the movie, it shows someone else coming to kill him. So it was like, what the fuck? But I am talking. Just a minute, please. Could you please have manners? I'm in the chair right now. You can have it. Oh my gosh. Stella, we can't both fit in the chair. She just doesn't care. She just is like, I want in the chair. Okay, hurry up, please. I'm trying to talk here. Okay, I'm just going to keep on going. Oh, God. Go. Okay, scoot over. Okay, so um, the um, they were in there and all this stuff started happening and everybody was saying that the house is haunted and, you know, it made sense. And I was thinking about, yeah, I mean, if you moved into a haunted house that there had been this tragedy, this tragic murder, just think of the energy imprint there, that that, that would stay the, um, the fear or the whatever led up to it. Like there's, that has energy. It has its own energy. And um, you'd have to do a lot of clearings and stuff. But you know, I think most places, I mean, I think probably most houses are haunted and people just don't have the awareness. It's all about awareness. It is just being aware that there's something, you know, you put your keys there and now they're over there. I've had such weird things happen though. I mean, one of the times um, my daughter, we were at, I think, I'm sure I've talked about this house before. This house was one of the creepiest of the haunted houses that I've lived in. I've been in a lot of haunted houses, but this one was just so creepy. And I know this woman just wanted me dead, but um, she, um, and I could, I could sense her. I knew that she was there and I knew that she, didn't like me. Stella is just a chair hog. She's always got to be just like right on me. Um, what was I going to say about that house? Let's see. Now I'm, I can't keep thinking about it because then um, I'll just get, or I, I'll keep thinking and thinking and thinking and I'll get paranoid that I'm taking too long to think of it. Well, it'll come to me. Um, so in the movie though, the people um, were in there and all this stuff keeps happening and they are freaking out. And so then the mother and daughter are like, uh, we're leaving, we're not gonna stay here. This house is it's too creepy, it's too haunted. And then <laughs> it just, it took like this hard right. <laughs> and, and all of a sudden it was like one of the murderers it was a third person of the other two murderers and he was living in the house up in the attic and he was spying on them and doing this stuff um like he would listen to them and then he would do stuff that they would say and then the daughter knew him because she went up and started talking to him at one point just like you know they were old friends 
then she went out and found the other dead guys, took stuff of theirs so this guy could escape because he's a murderer. It was like, ah, oh, this movie started out so good, and then it just went like, what the fuck? Like, I thought it was going to be a ghost story, not just like a weirdo living up in your attic, cr creepy, crazy person, which, you know, that has happened too. There's been, I've seen those stories where there's somebody living under someone's bed, and they didn't even know it. When the police came, that they found um, so much stuff under this person's bed, and he had a knife under there. When he came out, she saw him and he was all, uh, it sounds like decrepit, creepy, like, and he was um, all skinny, like some crazy, I don't know, probably crazy homeless person, I don't know, but um, he is living under there and he had food and condom wrappers and all sorts of stuff. Oh, that just creeps me the fuck out. Like someone's like sleeping right under you and you don't even know. And then there's been the ones where there was um, the lady who was living, she was going through the cabinets up into a crawl space up in the house. And then when the people would leave, they caught it on the video. There's been a couple of these ones where it was caught on, they got nanny cams or something because shit kept being weird at their house. Things were moving, things were disappearing. So they put a nanny cam in and then they caught her. I've seen the video footage thing of her and she... She creeps out of this cabinet above the fridge, I think, and then steps down. It's very, like, the ring or something. She's creepy as fuck. And she's in there drinking out of their milk right out of the jug. Ugh. God, that's gross. I gr gross, Milk grosses me out anyways, but drinking out of the jug things grosses me out, especially when I was in nursing school and they talked about the enzymes in your mouth and stuff. Like, if you eat some yogurt and then you um, just put it back in, and then you get it out later and it's got like that whole liquid. That liquid is the enzymes from your mouth breaking down the the stuff that's in there. <laughs> Just that it really grosses me out for some reason. And so when people drink, you know, out of the thing, the enzymes in their mouth, you don't have to spit in it. You just have, there's an enzyme, you know, transfer and it goes in there. And so the people who drink it, they're down the jugs of milk or juice or whatever. And they put it back and then somebody else is drinking that person's spit because the enzymes go in there and start breaking it down. It's just like, ugh. I can't even, when I'm drinking, I can't even drink the last little bit of something. I just feel like it's all spit. <laughs> so funny how we all have these like weird things about us, you know? Um, but the, um, you know, that movie just really, it was going so good too. I was like all thinking about you know, ghosts and the imprints and the energy and all that stuff. And then just that total twist. And I was like, oh, that sucks. Um, and then I was watching a bunch of um, trailers, you know, like a, a whole bunch. And sometimes I'll just go in and I'll watch them and then I'll put them in my play, my watch list or whatever. Because, oh gosh, it's really hard sometimes to find something to watch. But so I... Um, I feel like I'm really sitting weird now, leaning up on her. She's so sweet. Look at this cute little face. She's such a sweetie. Um, but, um, oh God, it drives me crazy when I forget what I'm gonna say. Ah, well, I mean, it's just so much so much energy you know one thing I was talking about uh, one of my daughters just found out she was pregnant I don't know if I've talked about this before but you know she was told and she's the daughter who um, had a child die and it you know it sent her into a really hard time in her life that she had to really pull herself out of and it took years of really um, very um, What's that called when you're just, you don't care what happens to you? You're just like you're on a suicide mission. Like, however it happens, I don't care. I just don't care about anything. I don't care about life. I don't care about anything. And, you know, you would try and say, yeah, but what about your kids? And she just, I think when you have a kid and um, dead that you can't take care of, and then you have your other ones, you just, you're so like, oh, but that baby, who's taking care of my baby? And, you know, we forget about souls are not 
really babies. Souls are really, you know, independent energy. Um, so, you know, she went through that hard time and then uh, it's ru it ruined her first marriage. And then so she got in the second one. And then this was when a whole bunch of stuff was happening for her of her own personal growth. And then that was causing her to look at her relationship differently because it wasn't fulfilling for her. It wasn't, it just wasn't working. And, um, you know, she wasn't happy. She was just down. And so she had to bring herself to in that relationship was really hard because this person she was with is somebody who needs a lot of, um, care and, it, you know, that has all of its own problems, you know, you know, you leave somebody who needs you, then, you know, are you abandoning them? Like it's a lot of stuff that you have to go through in any relationship, you know, that you have to recognize the different, um, particles of it. And so, you know, she felt what she needed, but before when they were, First together, and they had, um, cause they were, they knew each other way back to high school. And, um, you know, she had another child and then she wanted to have another one. And they said she was in menopause and she couldn't. Anyways, now, you know, she's getting close to 40 and she, uh, she was seeing one guy after they had split up, but she had also had known for, geez, she knew him for a long, long time. And then he died and that was like another trauma for her. And then she starts seeing somebody else. And then all of a sudden now she's pregnant and she wasn't supposed to be able to get pregnant again, especially after all these years when they told her she was already in menopause. So that is like a miracle. And you know, a lot of people, then they could go, well, this isn't going to work for me right now. I can't do this, but I really, feel like when something is given to you, like I was not expecting to ever get pregnant. And when I did, it changed my whole life. Like it gave me, um, something to hold on to. So I wasn't so self-destructive and cause I was pretty self-destructive when I was young. I was really, uh, you know, I was kind of a mess. I mean, there wasn't, I can't, think of probably there wasn't a drug I didn't try. I didn't stay doing any of them, but every party you went to, well, quaaludes. I did do a lot of quaaludes. And I didn't even know that they were horse tranquilizers at the time. I was like, quaaludes, hell yeah. That was a very 70s kind of thing. But, but yeah, back then, I was just a mess. I could have cared less what happened to me. And then once I had kids, then I was like, oh, I have a reason to take care of myself. I have a reason to be alive. I have this little person that I have to take care of. And, um, you know, so it was really good for me in my life. And I think it is for a lot of people. And a lot of people, you know, there's so much stuff going on about uh, women's rights and stuff like that. And I just say, I feel like so much of it is just all this agenda, especially if you think about, you know, the harvesting and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I just think there's going to be so many things that we're going to relook at and just, uh, there's going to be so many changes coming up in our future. And, you know, I'm really excited um, for all the stuff that's coming. I, I, I mean, we're, we're so close so close and once once it starts happening it's just gonna go boom 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 and then you know we're just gonna be a totally totally different world and so it's, it's really exciting and that is one thing too is um you know I was talking about yesterday is that um you know I feel like I can see the future, I can't see, you know, they don't show me all the little details. Cause even if, even if you do see them, they can switch because just like uh, what I was talking about, you know, you, you, your life is predestined. You, you decide, you, you choose the template, you know, that you are gonna go and, um, 
but then once you have the template, you're also handed uh, the paint brushes. You you are going to create what the what you are going to make this template into, and um, so when you are um, you know living your life, you know like I've said before, it doesn't matter you know which job you go, which way on the crossroads because they're all going to be ultimately the same. They're all going to have lessons that you're going to have to deal with. And, um, you know, when you're on the right track, I think that you will feel excited about it. You'll feel like, you know, this is great, but you also have to realize that sometimes there's still lessons in the right track. There can still be things that are going to happen, but it's all for some other thing that you don't know about yet. So when you are, um, God, I do it all the time. I'm going to be in the middle of a fucking sentence and it just, all of a sudden it just goes black. <laughs> um, well, anyways, you, you know, that there, there is a template that you, um, have. Like you, you, you will start here, you will end here, and what you do in between, you will have certain lessons, and the lessons will come in different ways depending on how you go, but the, it still is going to be, you know, ultimately the same ending, no matter what. Like, and you have an expiration date from the time you start, you know, it all has to be done in this amount of time. And there is ways, you know, I mean, people kill themselves and some people kill themselves and, you know, that just messes up a lot of contracts and it can cause a flurry of, you know, that, that right there, you can, um, create a karmic wave that, excuse me, I'm not getting your way. No, you're not going back out. Let me just finish this. Okay that you can create uh, a karmic wave by killing yourself. But you can also have a suicide beat in your plan. So that's why, you know, we can't sit here and think like we know everything and we have the right to judge everything. We have to just be understanding and have compassion for everything, you know? Like, I guess I need to have compassion for her. Um, but anyways, um, I probably need to go fitting another call. I'm sure there's going to be more. Stella wants out. It's just one of those days. This is just one of those frenetic energy days. So uh, have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.